Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Sideshow Collectibles Star Wars 1 6 scale figure unboxing and review video. Now today we are taking a look at my very first 1 6 scale Lando figure. And that is the Skiff Guard disguise version of him from Return of the Jedi. This guy was released, I do believe, late last year, and unfortunately I decided not to pick it up. But a lot of you have told me in the comments, this guy is worth a look. So of course, I had to go ahead and get him. I am now padding out my Return of the Jedi shelf, and eventually I may actually have to cave in and pick up Jabba. Let me know if that's something you'd like to see on the channel as well. Now I do believe he is still in stock with Sideshow Collectibles right now, so I will pop the link down in the description below to head over to Sideshow and pick him up. What we are going to do now though is pop the box flat in the light box and do the unboxing. And here of course we have the box art for Lando. It's relatively straightforward, the usual sideshow Star Wars fare. We do have an image of the figure right up here on the front of the box. Nothing really on the side, but a pretty darn nice product shot once again on the back. On the inside though is where we start to see a little bit more flair. You can see another image of Lando, this time with the unhelmeted head sculpt. Another one on the side, yet another on the bottom, and then the same thing all the way around. Now I have to say, I wasn't all that excited initially about the prospect of getting this version of Lando. I much prefer the just Bespin administrator outfit with the cape. Of course, it's Lando. He needs a little bit of flair, a little bit of panache, if you will. However, to fill out the Return of the Jedi collection, I thought this guy may indeed be worth picking up. First in hand impressions are that he feels relatively sturdy. Whether or not his joints stay that way over time remains to be seen. You can see he does come with one and of course down below two trays. So what we are going to do now is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. And here we have all the bits and pieces that come with Lando. Let's start off by taking a look at the display base first. Unfortunately, they went with the clean version of their regular hexagonal style display base. While I like how simple it is and the effectiveness of the crotch grabber, there's no print on here. They could have at the very least printed a Jabba's Palace style flooring, maybe even some sand. It would have been super easy to do. We've seen them do prints before, but unfortunately we got nothing. We just get a teeny tiny little Star Wars logo up on top there. It's just a little bit boring. As the head sculpt went rolling off, we may as well take a look at both sculpts. I have to say, I am pretty impressed. Initially, I wasn't sure how good these were going to be, but the sculpt, I think, is on point. I can see Billy D. Williams there. It's just the skin textural paint applications that are lacking. However, I do think the helmeted head sculpt is the stronger of the two. It looks sensational. There's dirt and grime and weathering, and there's a little bit of feathering of more dirt and grime up on top there. It's truly a spectacular sculpt. So yes, I will be going with the helmeted sculpt on my version of Lando. Now he does come with two weapons. This being some sort of spear or pike with a blade up on top. This is also suitably weathered. There's a bit of pitting and a little bit of texture up there on the blade. And then all the way down on the bottom, you can see a little bit more of that metallic paint application. It's a really nice looking piece. So too is his blaster. This has some dry brushing over the top just to make it look a little bit more metallic. And also some brown paint applications for that wooden handle. Lastly, he does come with an array of hands, and each of them does come with their very own wrist peg. So yes, I am very happy about that. You do have a relatively nice paint application on the hand, but the sculpt is a little bit rough. You can see some flashing on the fingers, a little bit of glue, unfortunately, on the back of this one, and pretty much no skin speckling to speak of. Don't exactly know why they didn't do that, because we've seen them do it before. They definitely can, 
but for Lando, they decided not to. What we are going to do now, though, is get Lando himself out here and take a closer look. And here we have him standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. This Lando didn't really have me all that excited. I don't know why, but I'm super glad y'all convinced me to go ahead and pick him up. He's actually a really impressive release, all the way down to the head sculpt. There are a couple of things which do bug me, and we'll talk about them in just a second. But as an overall piece, being the only Return of the Jedi Lando in 1-6 scale that currently exists... Yeah, you could do worse. This is a pretty darn awesome figure. Plus, when you pop on the helmeted head sculpt, he looks even better. What we are going to do now, though, is take him off the rotating turntable, punch in, and take a closer look at the details. And here we have him up close and personal. Now I know we've already taken a look at both head sculpts side by side, but it's worth noting once again that yeah, it's a really impressive sculpt and it fits quite nicely on the body. It's just the paint applications and the lack of the skin texture detail which lets it down. Also, unfortunately on mine, I'm not sure if you can see, no, you can quite clearly see, the strap of his outfit was pressing up against his neck and it left a line over over the top there. Not ideal, I will definitely be contacting Sideshow and seeing if they can send a replacement that doesn't have that line along his neck. But yes, overall I still really like the head sculpt. Now let's talk about the outfit in more detail. First of all, the material choices. I really like it, it's a nice, soft, breathable, movable material, then the hard plastic armour is over the top. We do have a bunch of pleathery style straps, but luckily none of them are held in place by magnets, so they shouldn't fall apart, because with the older sideshow figures that use magnets to hold straps together, sometimes they deteriorated and the magnets no longer stuck to the fabric. Luckily, it's a non-issue here. The paint applications on the armor looks suitably metallic. You can see there's a sheen to it. There's also this rusted style patina effect, specifically up here in the shoulder pads. It has that green sort of look that aged metal and gold tends to have on there. It looks fantastic, and it is different between both shoulder pads. The one thing, however, that I really don't like, and a apparently is inaccurate to the film, are these twine straps. All I have to do to swap them out is literally untie this little knot in the back and then replace it with a black string. However, this is literally string, and you can see it's been very crudely tied at the back here. It looks kind of cheap and nasty. Not exactly sure what sideshow we're going for here, but it's an easy fix, so I'm not personally too upset about it. The material on the shirt is also a really nice, soft and light material, so it will get out of the way when it comes to posing. Something that won't necessarily get out of the way with posing though, is the outfit down here. You have multiple different layers and it is very padded out. You do have a pleathery style belt with the pistol in the working holster, and this flap over the top. This feels like a really nice sturdy material, so it shouldn't hopefully degrade over time. There is some nice weathering around the edges there. He also has one gauntlet piece on the right side, whereas the other is left bare. I always do like the Star Wars asymmetrical designs, it works quite nicely. Coming down to the pants, they are fairly basic, just a light style pant with a little bit of weathering and wrinkling as well, just to give it a little bit more life. If they were flat and smooth, they would look rather boring. Another semi-complaint I have is when it comes to the feet. These are supposed to be his actual feet underneath these sandal-style boot things. But as you can see, they kind of just look like flat sausages. There's no detail there. You can see a little bit of a hint of what would be the front of the foot with some musculature detail, but they don't have really any skin texture in terms of the paint. You can see a little bit in the sculpt, 
but in the paint itself, it's rather soft. The rest of the boot, however, is really nicely done with the leathery style texture over the top, and yes, it is a split-cut boot design, my personal favourite. You do, of course, have some tread on the underside, but he is rather clean. I would have liked a little bit more dirt and grime around the soles of his shoes. Overall, though, I'm really liking this head sculpt, but I know you'll want to see him with the masked one on. And here we have him wearing the masked head sculpt. This looks fantastic. I will 100% be displaying my Lando with this head sculpt on. It fits the body perfectly. It evokes the scene perfectly. And honestly, it just looks totally badass. For some reason, this design for the helmet, obviously is the claws and the pieces around the mouth here, just makes him look super mean. Also, that top part of his nose and eyes in the sculpt looks surprisingly a lot like him. I can tell exactly who that's supposed to be behind the mask. It's a super impressive head sculpt. So yes, overall, even though I do have some minor complaints here and there about the outfit and material choices, especially those twine sections, it's still a fantastic release for Lando. Sitting in front of us right here, this shot specifically, he looks totally fantastic, almost as if he's been ripped right out of the movie. Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, or I should say a retro comparison, here we have the ancient Sideshow Leia Bounty Hunter disguise, aka Boosh. I really like the figure even though it is relatively old. It could do with an updated body, and for some reason her boots are starting to become sticky and deteriorate, but now having these two together, I can't not display them on the same shelf. They look fantastic. While I do hope that Sideshow eventually gets around to doing an updated version of this layer, for now, I personally am pretty darn happy because yeah, these two look awesome together. Next up, here we have the Hot Toys Return of the Jedi Luke Skywalker next to Lando. As you can see, Lando is suitably tall. Mark Hamill isn't known for being the tallest guy in the galaxy, and here he is represented as a smaller figure. I also think that's down to the slightly larger scale of body that Sideshow tend to use, which is perfectly fine. I think this works quite nicely. Do these two look out of place together on the same shelf? No, I personally don't think they do. I think this works perfectly fine, especially if you have the masked or helmeted head sculpt on. It looks even better. Lastly, I know this is not the Return of the Jedi version of Boba. This is the pre-pro Empire Strikes Back version, but it's the one I had to hand. It works really nicely. He is a little bit shorter than Lando, but that's perfectly fine with me. Lando can be a tall guy in the display. In my mind's eye, that just works. Have to say though, having this guy standing alongside Boba, I kind of wish someone would fill out the rest of the rogues that were in Jabba's palace so he could create an entire diorama. And yes, I am talking about the band as well. The more the merrier. I think that would be a fantastic diorama. But nevertheless, if you did want to have this guy displayed alongside your Boba Fett, I think it would look pretty awesome. Just going over articulation for Lando. Now bear in mind, this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm gonna be a little bit more careful. I'm sure when you get yours in hand, you can push the joints slightly further than I'm willing to go. Now the head sculpt itself is on a fixed neck, however, it is a rubbery style neck, so you do get a fairly decent range of motion in pretty much all directions. The arms themselves will go up the full way, they will swivel forward and back on ratchets, might I add, which is a nice touch. You do also get a butterfly joint up at the shoulder. There is a double bend at the elbow and a swivel at the bicep. Of course, down here at the wrist, a regular 1-6 scale style wrist peg. As for the torso, there is a lot going on here. There are wraps and belts and various pieces of fabric, so it's a little bit more restricted, but you do get a crunch forward and back, swivel and pivot side to side. The legs will go forward to about there, go out to about there on ratchets once again, swivel at the upper thigh, a double bend at the knee which is incredibly stiff. I do hope it stays that way. Plus for good measure down here at the ankle, a regular ball joint plus a split cut boot design. Just wrapping up on the Sideshow Collectibles Return of the Jedi Skiff Guard version of Lando. 
I love this figure. He's totally awesome. I mean, Sideshow is kind of hit and miss sometimes, especially when it comes to their figure bodies. But they've made improvements. I'm pretty sure this guy is using the same body that they used on their Flash figure, the comic book style one. He's got the double jointed elbows, yet the really stiff and sturdy legs. It's this body that I wish they'd used on their Mythos Boba Fett, but nevertheless, this figure is awesome, whereas Boba Fett leaves a little bit to be desired. The only thing that I personally would want to change about this guy are those horrible, unsightly eyesores of strings that are wrapped around his biceps there, connecting his shoulder pads to the rest of his outfit. They're horrible. I don't know what Sideshow were thinking. I know that it's super easy to fix, but it's something that you really shouldn't have to. It's not even accurate to the film. The rest of him, though, is pretty darn fantastic. I love the detail on the outfit, plus all the various different materials. I think the head sculpts are great. Yes, even the unhelmeted one. Even though there's a lack of skin textural detail like we'd see with Hot Toys figures, I don't have any issue whatsoever popping this guy alongside my various other Return of the Jedi Hot Toys releases. I still think he's a fantastic figure. If you are looking to pick him up, I'm pretty sure he is still in stock with Sideshow right now. I have popped the link down in the description below to head over there and pick him up. If you are down in the description, why not check out the link to Six Scale Network, the awesome Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.